Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So in today's video we'll be following on from our previous videos which I'll do a link to on the screen somewhere now. And in those videos we are using Power Automate to get a day automated daily extract of a SharePoint list and store that into a CSV file on a separate SharePoint document library. And that's what we can see here. We're in the document library test archive and you can see we've got a list of all of these uh, extracts containing a date in the file name so we can see what date it was extracted and also to give it a unique name. And if we were to go into one of these files, so we've got the latest one here, the 1st of September, you can also see we've got a column G, which is our snapshot. So this is, again is just that exact date at which the data was extracted. So this gives us the ability to obviously report upon this data daily and ultimately we could see by day in a graph how the headcount has changed. So to do that, our tool of choice is gonna be Power BI. So let's jump into Power BI and obviously connect to this SharePoint library. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into transform data. I'm just gonna click the button as it stands here. And if you're familiar with Power BI, you'll know that when you go into a new source, you can select your desired um, file type or connection type. All I'm gonna do is go into blank query uh, because we can just do this completely from fresh. So what we want to do, go equals and type in here SharePoint. And the second one we have available to us is SharePoint.file. So let's select that and do our open brackets. So we can see the, the key variable, or not variable, but what it needs is a URL as a text. So all we're gonna do for that is we'll go back into our SharePoint uh, site and we'll copy the first part of this URL. So everything up until the site name. So if you look, you'll see sites slash analytics. So analytics is the name of our site. So let's just make sure we copy all of that. We'll go back into Power BI and within two dub or double quotations, we'll paste our string and select in this gray area below and you can see it's connected to SharePoint. So at the moment, what it's doing is for that SharePoint site, it's just pulling through all the content available to us. So there are, very, there are various number of ways you could obviously filter this data. But for me, I'm just gonna scroll down here and I can see that there's obviously a staff list here. And if I scroll to the right hand side, I can validate that yes, these are the files from the directory that I want. So it's test archive. So in order to ensure I'm left with only these files, what I'm going to do is in folder path, we'll just do a simple filter and we'll say text filters ends with. And once that opens up, we'll just type into here, test archive and the forward slash, select okay. And you can see we're now left with uh, obviously our desired role, result. A list of all of our files, which contain the uh, uh, the date and the file name and we can see that they're all coming from that same folder. If we just go into source and scroll all the way down to the bottom where our desired files were, you'll see that in fact within task test archive there is also this subfolder and if I select here I think you can see it, yeah, we can see we've got test archive, daily email and then in another subfolder called other. So the benefit of using ends with as I just did in our filter just ensures that we don't uh, also incorporate any of these sub-level folders into our data as well. But again, there are many ways you can obviously get around that, but this is probably the simplest one for this example. So let's just go back to our next step so we can see how our data is now looking. And the next thing we want to do is to insert a new step. So to do that, I'm simply going to right click and go insert step after. So it goes the new step. And at the moment, what our data is doing, it says it's equaling hashtag filtered rows. So all that means is it's just doing exactly what is in the filters row step. So if we go to here, we can see the data is exactly the same. So all it's saying at the moment is the source for this data is just the equal the same as filtered rows. But what we want to do is we want to combine all of that data. So all we're gonna do is build upon this. We'll click after the equal sign and just do a space. And well, actually we don't need double space. We'll go right in front of the hashtag. And all I'm going to do here is type the word binary dot combine and then open brackets. And then this is the source. So all of the files are available to us in filtered rows. And at the end here, I'm going to do a square, square bracket and write the word content because what we want to do is combine the content from all of those files available to us in that filters rows, filtered rows step. 
So once we've got that, we'll hit enter and it's going to refresh and hopefully combine all that information for us. And it's probably in adding, adding some additional steps as well. Yet we can see those building up on the right hand side. And there we go. All of that file information is now changed and we're actually seeing the content of all of those files. So there's a couple of tidy up pieces that I want to do here. So the first thing I'll do is go back to custom ID and we'll right click and rename this and we'll call this combine. Just again, when we're looking at our steps from this view, uh, we know exactly what was happening at that step without having to go into it. And we can see it's still refreshing up here by those yellow dots, which are now gone. Cool, so we've got combine, we've got to import our CSV. Yep, that all looks good. And then we go at the moment to change type. Well, what I want to do is I don't want to have this step just yet. We want to do some slight tweaking. So we'll just delete this for the time being. So as you can see, what it's done is the first row of our data set is actually containing our column headers. And also, as you'll see, if we were to scroll down, these column headers will be repeated for every file that we've combined. So I think we had about 10 or 12 files that we've combined into this data set. So these headers are going to appear uh, 10 or 12 times. So again, all, as always, there are multiple ways to go about this, but the first thing I want to do is I go into use first row as headers. If you can't see this option, just make sure you've got the, uh, the home tab selected in the ribbon at the top here. And then yeah, just select use first row as headers and what it will do is just basically nudge all the data up one. And you can say, once again, it's gone and changed all of our file uh, change types. Uh, all I'm going to do again is once again, delete this out. Um, this is where I'm just being a bit fussy, but uh, yeah, it just helps to tidy things as we go along. So one of the first things we also need to do having or, or knowing that potentially a header or column headers are going to be repeated in our data set is we just want to remove those. We don't want to see like you know, file name or whatever it is within our data um, when we report upon it. So let's just go into uh, the filter for snapshot. And all I'm going to do is we can see here we've got all of the dates at which data was extracted. So all I'm going to do is simply deselect snapshot from this field. Uh, and all that's going to do is make sure that none of our, our data does not contain file names. And the way to probably demonstrate that is if we just select everything and only select snapshot, you can see we will end up with a list literally just of all of our column headers. So in some way, this is a good test just to make sure all of our column headers align throughout all of the files. Uh, but for the purposes of this, we want to just ensure that everything is selected apart from do not select snapshot. So we do OK and we can see it will update our filter. Yeah, so nice and simply just make sure that the snapshot column does not contain the word snapshot. And that way we've reassured that we've got just the data that we want in here. And lastly, we'll just go and now do our formatting manually. So for us, these first four columns are all text. So let's just go and add these in just to be uh, really specific to make sure again, it does this every time the file's loaded. So we go text, text, uh, surname, Oh, taking a little while on first name there. Yeah, let's go change that to text as well. Uh, the same for email, we'll format that as text. You don't have to do this. I'm just really building upon this just to be really extensive. Uh, this is for us is date, time, and time zone. So and the same for end date, date, time, time zone. And then the very last one we've got here is our snapshot date. So for us, we want to change this for date. So you can obviously try this yourself to see the problem, but Again, the reason why I did this filtering we had here of filtering rows to remove the column names is because we want to format this as date. Obviously, if we had text in here, it's going to throw back an error because it's going to say, well, actually, some of your values aren't dates. So that's why I've just done our filtering, made sure we're left with the data that we actually want uh, before, again, obviously, we apply that um, the formatting to the data set. So I think at this stage, we're happy with everything as it is. The last thing I just noticed is we've got the query name is query one doesn't look too good, so we'll just change that to staff list, which our data set is called, and hit enter. So we can see it's tidied up over here and it's also reflected in the query name. We'll now go close and apply, and then what Power BI will do 
uh, yep, oh, it's now back on the screen for us. As you can see, it's now evaluating, obviously making sure it's got that connection to SharePoint, and it's gonna then import all of that data to us and obviously apply the steps that we've done in our, in our query as well. So depending obviously on the size of your data, this is gonna take uh, longer or, um, or, sh or less time. And again, another one to think about here is in this example, we're only working with um, a few, like seven columns of data. Uh, again, if you've got maybe, I don't know, 20, 30, or maybe 40 columns of data in your file, but you don't actually need to use all those, in that query that we worked on, obviously that'd be a good time to delete everything that you don't need, just to make sure that you're not wasting time importing stuff that, um, again, you, you don't need. So lastly, let's just start creating a very basic visual. So uh, let's just do a table maybe. I did. I think I mentioned the word chart earlier, but a table will obviously be easier. Uh, all we're gonna do is bring, obviously go for our table visual, and let's say we'll bring in the employee ID, uh, let's bring in their first name, and let's bring in the snapshot date. So we can see obviously at the moment it's done, built a hierarchy for us, but let's just do this drop down here against snapshot and select snapshot so it's not in a date hierarchy. And what we could do here rather than having the, actually I've done more than I need to do there. Um, let's just delete uh, first name. We'll bring employee ID at the end here. So it's snapshot employee ID. And then all I'm gonna do is select this drop down, and rather than have don't summarize, I'm gonna change that to count. And you can see what it's done for us is given us a count of our staff list per each date. So at the more at the moment, sorry, it's obviously very boring because it's all the same data across the files. Um, yeah, uh, obviously it's doing that daily extract, but because no activity is happening on that list, it's just remaining the same. But should yours be an actual working file where the numbers uh, differentiate daily, then of course you would in here see um, obviously your numbers as they grow or as they move across this time period. So I think we'll stop the video there uh, and we'll obviously continue in a few Future videos on how we can build upon this and maybe some other reporting tips that we could use uh, but like I say for the time being I hope you enjoyed that video if you have any questions about this content please drop me a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as possible also if you did enjoy the video please don't forget to give the video a like it's not only greatly appreciated by me but it helps the all-important YouTube algorithm and ensures that other people searching for this content are able to find this video and lastly if this is your first time maybe finding our video or you've watched videos before please can I ask you to subscribe to the channel and also hit that bell notification button. That way you will be notified of our future videos as and when they come out. So thank you very much again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.